The Silentium PC Navis EVO ARGB 280 V2 has a long name for a CPU cooler, but here we are in the middle of April reviewing another liquid closed loop CPU cooler from the Polish manufactured Silentium PC. This cooler is using the same Asetek based platform like most CPU coolers in this price range, and that's not exactly a bad thing, but it depends on how it is implemented within this product. To start this off, the radiator used for this cooler is made from aluminum and not copper and can accept two 140mm fans and has the standard dimensions of 310mm in length, 140mm in width and a thickness of just 28mm. The radiator also features the classic fin per inch density of 20 fins and has this plug on one of the corners which I can assume it's either for filling or bleeding the system. From the factory it has this very polite label applied on it saying to not remove it and you really shouldn't as most coolers are not really meant to be serviced. The water block has a plastic outer shell and features a design that I have to say it's rather nice. The shape of the water block and pump assembly has reduced dimensions and will not cause clearance issues with the motherboard. This being the addressable version of the cooler, the water block has some LEDs integrated within the plastic casing. They are found at the top, lighting up as a linear pattern and the Silentium logo. And of course, in addition, there is a wide strip of LEDs that goes around the entire water block edge. The cables of the water block are all black and fairly long. The connectors used are two 3-pin addressable RGB connectors for not only connecting the LEDs of the water block to a controller or to your motherboard, but also for passing through the RGB signal to other devices, such as the included 140mm fans. And then you have a standard SATA connector for powering the pump found inside the water block. The base plate of the cooler is smooth and made out of copper. There is no mirror-like reflection to be seen here. However, the surface is smooth enough to allow for the even spreading of the thermal compound on the CPU surface. The two tubes of the cooler are connected to the water block using plastic fittings which thankfully are able to swivel. Still speaking of the tubes, they have a length of approximately 380 mm and are covered in high quality synthetic sleeving on their entire length. They are also held in place to the radiator and to the water block with a metal coil fitting which I have rarely seen before but being made out of metal we can expect to last a long time. The cooler uses two 140mm fans. These are the Silentium PC Stella HP ARGB models. They have a speed range of 800 to 1800 RPM and can be controlled through software or through an external controller. Thankfully this fan is available as a separate product, so replacement or having a push-pull configuration can be done with ease. Additional features found on the Stella HP fans include rubber pads on the corners of the fans and a bunch of connectors. You have two connectors for the addressable RGB LEDs and two connectors for powering the fans. The two connectors are used for passing through both the power of the fan and also the RGB signal of the LEDs. While this increases the wire management difficulty as you have more cables than usual, it does help you out in the long run as you can basically use a single connector for both powering the fans and the same can be said for the RGB LEDs. The installation process is fairly easy, but there is one thing that I will complain about. You see, you install the backplate at the back of the motherboard and then you have these metallic studs that go through the motherboard onto the side of the CPU socket. All good so far. Then you need to have these plastic spaces mounted around the studs. However, they refuse to stay in place, especially when you are trying to install the CPU water block over the CPU itself. It's not the end of the world, but if the inner diameter of these plastic spaces was, let's say, 0.5mm smaller, things would go a lot smoother because they would stay in place thanks to the friction. Once installed, we get to see that the Navis EVO ARGB 280 V2 has a good design that will match any modern motherboard and configuration. And before we get into the testing of the cooler, here is a sample of how it sounds like with both fans running at their maximum speeds. For reference, the pump noise is so low that it's not even worth recording. Trust me, this cooler has a really quiet pump even when running at its maximum speed. The actual noise reading of the Navis 280 with both fans running at their maximum speed peaked at 43 decibels, measured at 10 centimeters away from the system and CPU cooler. 
For testing, we have two methods to figure out the performance of a CPU cooler. First, all coolers are tested using an Intel i9-9900K CPU running at stock frequency and then manually overclocked to 5 GHz. The first test uses the Intel BurnTest V2 benchmark, which simulates a CPU load that you can reach in modern AAA video games. And in this test, the Navi's 280 V2 ARGB reached a maximum temperature of 60 degrees Celsius, with an ambient temperature of 26 degrees Celsius, a temperature which puts this cooler on the same level as the Noctua NH-U12A or the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4. However, the second test is where we see the true cooling performance of these coolers because I am using the FPU stability test found in the AIDA64 software. And in this test, the temperature reached by this cooler was 85 degrees Celsius with the same ambient temperature of 26 degrees Celsius. When you look at this result, you have to keep in mind that this benchmark places an unrealistic load on the CPU. This level of power draw and heat will not be encountered while gaming or video rendering, but it is a good way to see how each CPU cooler behaves and performs. The Silencium PC Navis EVO ARGB 280V2 has a price of around 92 euros or 84 US dollars, which is not exactly cheap, but it is cheaper than many other 280 CPU coolers available on the market right now, and even cheaper than some 240mm coolers, which puts the Navis into a good light right from the start. The cooling performance is good, but I was expecting a bit better, especially from a cooler that has bigger fans and a bigger radiator. However, it is not a bad cooler at all, and the price makes it even better. But one of the main reasons to get this cooler is the noise. And now, before you go and tell me how 43 decibels is not silent, hear me out. I am not talking about the fans, I am talking about the pump which even at its maximum speed is almost dead silent, a rare thing to find these days even on many high-end CPU water cooling units. So what you are getting with this CPU cooler is adequate cooling, a low noise operating pump and a good build quality, all being backed up by a 3-year manufacturer's warranty. The Navis also has addressable RGB LEDs integrated on the main components, plenty of pass-through connectors and a pair of good 140mm fans. Also, you get an addressable LED controller included in the package, which increases the value of the cooler even more. If you like this review, then perhaps you can consider subscribing for more. And also, if you want to support the channel directly, in the description below you have both the Patreon and Subscriber Star pages.